What's cracking my photography friends? Hope you're all doing really well. I'm TK North and in this video, I'm gonna show you my top five tips for really making your portraits shine or stand out. Showing you how to create really stunning edits in Lightroom with a few quick and easy tips. Always remember when editing portraits, there is a fine line between creating a really nice edit and pushing too hard and really ruining your photo. So I'm going to probably say it throughout this video. Remember, subtlety is key. Let's jump in. So tip number one is fixing or adjusting your skin tones. So the first important thing we need to do when working with skin tones is adjust or fix the white balance. So I've got an image here, I'm just gonna boost the exposure so we can see it a bit better and it's more naturally exposed. Now, the overall white balance on this one is already quite good, but you can see if I adjust it, how much this actually affects the skin tone. So this is why having the right white balance is really important. So that's always step one, fix your white balance. The next thing I'm gonna do is apply a bit of a preset because that's gonna change our colors a little bit. Remember, everyone's skin tones are different. So even with presets or even as you go down and adjust color, you're always going to need to tweak your skin tones a little bit. So let's pick this one because the skin tones are actually probably a little bit too heavy for my liking. Now to fix this, the easiest way, come down to HSL color. I'm gonna come across to saturation to reduce the overall skin tones. We're gonna to use our selector tool. I do this because it selects more than one color at once where anywhere we click on the image, click and drag down, it will reduce those colors or drag up will increase it. So this is a really easy way to fix your skin tone. So I'm just gonna reduce that down a little bit there. Now in the same way, we can change the color a little bit using this selector tool with hue. So this one's probably a little bit on the red side for me. So again, click anywhere on the skin, drag down, it will bring it more towards red, drag up, and I'm bringing those skin tones back towards yellow, just a fraction. You can see if we go back to the original preset, I've just reduced those overall skin tones and brought them a tiny bit back towards yellow. The next thing I like to do with skin tones is actually boost the luminance. Again, we can use our selector tool, come across to the skin tones, and just drag up a little bit. You can see that it's just making the skin tones stand out a little bit more. So tip number two is smoothing out the skin. So for softening the skin, you can see I'm nice and zoomed in here so you can see what we're doing. I'm just gonna boost that exposure. And again, I might just put a preset on to give it a nice bit of color. See which one we're happy with. Okay, I like this faded film too, but I'm just gonna get rid of the grain so it's not affecting the skin there at all. Now to soften the skin, I'm going to come up to masking and we're gonna select brush. Basically now I'm happy with those brush settings there, but to increase the size, I'm just gonna use my close bracket. Basically just paint anywhere around the skin there on the face that isn't a feature. So we don't wanna get any of the hair. We don't wanna get the eyebrows there. We definitely don't wanna get the eyes or the lips or the mouth. I'm just gonna soften a little bit through there as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually come here to effect. Rather than change the sliders, there's one in here that already saved in Lightroom that works really well. You should see it there automatically. And that's soften skin light. So you can see if I turn our brush off, how it's just softened the skin nicely. And if we look at our settings, all it's done is reduce the texture and the clarity. Sometimes I just use texture for this. You can see as I slide that, it softens it out more. Clarity. I don't like to go too heavy on, but you can see how it just softens the skin nicely there. So I'm pretty happy with that. Again, we turn off our brush. You can see we've got nice soft skin there without having to use Photoshop. So number three is fixing up any skin blemishes or even tired eyes, which you can actually do all in Lightroom. Again, it's going to save you a ton of time not having to open up Photoshop. So this just goes basically a little bit further than our previous step. And all we're going to do is fix the blemishes. So we're gonna come up to spot removal here. Looks like a Band-Aid. And basically, pretty happy with those settings. We can change the opacity later. Might just increase that a little bit. 
Now, this skin is actually already really good. It doesn't need much tweaking at all. There's a couple of little blemishes we can quickly fix though. So just by clicking on that, Lightroom will select another area. Again, perfect. And it's just replaced. We can move that area that we're using to replace the original area. We can move those around as we see fit. Another little one here. Again, just reduce the size of my spot. And you can see there, I've just got rid of those little blemishes. Now, if I come back into that, this also works really well for getting rid of those tired eyes, which I probably need to do. I wish I could do it on video, but if we come up and just make that a little bit smaller, I'll just zoom in a little bit so I can see what we're doing and just brush over under the eye there. Now this has done a terrible job, but if I drag this down underneath that area, you can see it's done a really good job now. We can change the opacity, which will just kind of blend it in. You can see zero there or bring it up. We'll just blend it in kind of nicely. And I'm happy with that there. So you can see how that's really smoothed out under the eye as well. Really handy, really easy tool that usually you might go into Photoshop to use, but you can do it all in Lightroom. So number four is enhancing the eyes. Now this is something you do need to go on the subtle side because if you go too heavy, it can really ruin your image, but small changes can have a really great effect. So for enhancing the eyes, quite similar to what we just did. Again, we're gonna use masking and add another brush. So come down to create new mask brush and just make that a little bit smaller. Basically, we're just gonna brush over the eyes a little bit. Now you can do this one at a time if you want one eye to be a bit brighter than the other, but I'm just gonna do both here. And remember, very subtle here. So I'm just gonna boost the exposure a little bit, maybe bring my clarity up a little bit. You can also bring up the whites. One step further here is to add another brush layer or another brush mask. And this time we're just gonna brush over the eye itself. And again, Lightroom's got a pre-save setting here. If we come down to Iris Enhance, you can see here what this is doing is exposure, clarity, and saturation. And if I turn that off, you can see it's done a pretty good job just to bring out those eyes a little bit more. We can boost that a little bit, but remember you can see as I go too heavy here, it starts looking scary and a little bit unnatural. So remember to go subtle on these. So number five is using radial gradients or radial filters, which they used to be called, to really draw attention in or draw your eye into the subject. Again, click a preset that we like. Again, I quite like faded film two here. Yeah, so let's go ahead with that one. Overall exposure is not bad. Now, of course, to boost the exposure on just our subject, we can always use the new select subject tool which works really well you can see it selected my subject great on this occasion so i can just boost the exposure there a little bit on the subject but why i really like radial filters or radial gradients as they're now called is because it's going to gradually apply those settings rather than apply them to a whole area it will gradually apply them so for instance if i create new mask come down to radial filter and just add one over the face there now I always make sure my feather is at 100%. You can see if I boost the exposure here, it's really subtle and because it's gradually applying that, you can't really tell where it starts or where it ends. So I've got a kind of saved setting here that is subject TK, which I like. Basically this is just exposure, reduce contrast, a bit more whites and increases the clarity. You can see if I turn that off, how it's just brought a little bit more attention to the subject. Now in the same way, we can use a reverse or inverted radial gradient. So I'm gonna add a new one, come down radial gradient, add that in around the face again, but I'm gonna make it nice and big and I'm going to select invert here. So this is one way we can really draw our eye into the subject, especially if it's a real close up, not like this one, but even on this one, it'll work nicely, I think. If we reduce the exposure there, you can see how it's just bringing our eye in 
a little bit more to the subject. The beauty of using a radial gradient rather than working with say vignetting down in effects is we can now move this wherever we want. It's not gonna just ply the vignette to the corners. It means we can tweak other settings as well like clarity and texture. Again, just to bring our eye in to the subject there. Even better now on Lightroom, what's really handy with this radial gradient, I can go in and subtract the area of just the subject. So basically, this is still gonna be applying that radial gradient behind the subject, but you can see as I move it around, it's not actually affecting the subject at all, which is really handy. So this is just one way to kind of make our subjects stand out nicely. This big one, I might even reduce those whites. And you can see again, just how much it makes the subject stand out. So that's why these radial gradients are really great with portraits, really draw your eye to the subject and make your subject stand out. A bonus tip, I'm going to show you how you can create a little bit more of a film look by adding a little bit of grain to your portraits. Pop on a preset again, so let's go. Maybe something a little bit different, maybe that one. I'm just gonna bring it a little bit more towards orange, a bit warmer. Pretty happy with it there. If we come down to effects, under grain here, we can increase the amount. Let's zoom in so we can really see what we're doing. You can see already it's starting to get that kind of film look. You can also make that a little bit more rough. Depending on how heavy, you can increase the size, which will make it look a little bit heavier there again. And you can see now we've got like a nice kind of film look just from adding a little bit of grain. All right, I hope you found this video useful to support the channel. Remember to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. For now, keep creating, keep growing. I'm TK North, catch you in the next one. Bye for now.